Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. In this video, we're going to talk about why is inflation affecting health care? Why is it affecting tuition? Why are the prices at the hospital or food going up so radically? And yet the government statistics from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the CPI, measured period by period inflation is relatively stable. They will tell you that there's nothing to see here. They're, they're meeting their goal, even, even a little bit beyond their goal of 2 to 3% inflation, whereas inflation might be 1.5%. They want to they increase it. How is this possible that if we know that if you go to the doctor, you're going to have an $18,000 medical bill at the hospital? How is this possible that my school where I went, it was several thousand dollars a year? Now it's $70,000 a year. How is this possible if we do not have inflation? If the CPI tells us that period to period, there's nothing to see here, that we have fairly relatively stable aggregate prices. Here's the explanation. The explanation is inflation is a monetary phenomenon. Yes, there is some argument for cost push inflation or demand inflation, but sustained inflation, the radical price increases we see in housing, stock market, medical, food, tuition, it's all connected to money. Then how come the CPI is not showing that? Why is not the aggregate price level going up? It has to do with the fact of the second industrial revolution we're experiencing right now. In the 19th century, America had an amazing industrial revolution and prices fell dramatically. It was called the Great Deflation. The deflation occurred because efficiency gains in the production process. If you have a field and you're, or you're uh, tilling it with a mule and then you put a tractor on it, you use fertilizer, you're going to put more output. Whenever you increase output, supply increases. Supply increases, prices go down. Whether it was electrification, railroad, these, these things, some of these came subsequent, automation, assembly lines. It all was connected with increased innovation, entrepreneurial activity that created more efficiency, more supply, and prices declined. That's what happened in America, the great deflation. And that's what's happening today. But it's not happening in America, it's happening in China, in India, where we have automation, AI, logistical improvements, transportation, and they're able to produce things that we once produced at a cheaper and cheaper price. Every year, the prices are falling. That's why you have stores like Dollar Tree. You ever look behind the curtains of Amazon? The man behind the curtain, what's, what you really see is everything on Amazon are mostly is made in China. You have, if you go to Alibaba and then find that same exact product, you'll see it 10 times cheaper. Somebody imports it, sells it through the Amazon network, and it goes to your door in an Amazon package. It's not like Amazon produces that in the US. It's, this is all China. So if you take a toy, here's a toy train. That's a pretty nice train made with plastic. I don't know if it has BPA or not. Kids chew on it. It's made in China, 100%. And all these things, maybe uh, you know, 100 years ago, they were made with wood or metal. They would last 100 years, and it would be a higher quality. Now. It's all plastic we're importing and it's disposable. What about clothing? Clothing is the same th thing. Here's a Hollister shirt, it's pretty much polyester as most clothes are. And what happens? You wear it for six months, goes through the wash, it doesn't fit right. You just throw it out, thrift it, and you're on to the next thing. So prices are decreasing. They're decreasing radically because of China. Technology, think of flat screen TVs, computers, all these things we have great Deep, uh, not inflation, but deflation occurring. So the Federal Reserve's mandate is to keep 2%, 2 to 3% inflation going. And if we've got great deflation coming from this imported products that other people are actually benefiting for in overseas countries, then they have to stop it. What do they do? They print some more of this green stuff. They print more money. When the money falls down from the sky, it trickles down through the banking system, through their open market operations, going to the big banks and trickling down to the little guy. What happens is there's a general stable price level because it compensates. If medical costs go up 20% and cheap Chinese toys go down 20%, we have zero inflation. It averages out. It's hard to understand because it's very abstract. But eventually the, the, the money is worth like leaves.
they keep on printing it and there's an inverse correlation between the value of money and the price of the goods then you're going to see the bubble you're going to see cracks it's like the boy who sticks his finger in the dike but the crack occurs somewhere else because pressure builds up there's going to be something else and when they're still trying to maintain this mandate of steady prices because so many consumer goods are coming down from china and india and places like that and, and philippines I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying there's great deflation for the second industrial revolution. And they print more money to keep the prices stable than the things that are indigenous to this country. Medical, tuition, school tuition, food or anything produced here is going to skyrocket. It's going to go extremely high. Real estate. And not only that, it doesn't affect every individual the same. What if you're, you're a student coming out, your tuition bills are high, you're going to have to take debt, you're going to have to find housing for a new family, where some guy who's retired living in Palm Beach, he's got this, everything paid for, he's just living in a condo, maybe he doesn't eat that much, it's not going to affect him the same, but it's going to affect you. So this price deflation occurring is being compensated through quantitative easing through the Federal Reserve System through open market operations and yet it shows a stable price level a stable aggregate price level it affects everybody differently just like a fish if we take the aggregate salinity of the water in the united states and say how does it affect people it doesn't affect everybody in the individual the same each which fish is it a freshwater fish is it a saltwater fish is it a bracket fish and that's the case we are all individuals and you're looking at an aggregate price level that the federal reserve tries to stabilize so if you want to blame somebody don't blame the insurance companies the big business yes yeah, sure there's all a little bit of guilt on everybody's part it really is inflation is a monetary phenomenon inflation prices go up because money is being printed and if it's not going up in aggregate it's going up because something's falling and something else goes up that doesn't sound too fair to me because relative prices the relative price level, the relationship of one good to the other is what really matters, and that's the free market alternative. We can't claim to have a free market in the United States if the most important commodity, money, is not free. So if you want to know why housing, if you want to know why medical, why tuition is skyrocketing, it's the Federal Reserve. Thank you very much.